Hey folks, have you ever had this happen to you? Skipping, stuttering, it's impossible to edit, right? Well, today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about using proxies in post-production to deal with playback issues when using high efficiency codecs like H.265. Some cameras have a lot of different codecs you can record with, and it can be a little difficult to know which one will work best for you. Modern compression has been able to achieve pretty good image quality with very low bit rates, and just asking what's got the highest bit rate may not be that helpful. Some of these highly efficient codecs, such as H.265, can be extremely difficult for some NLEs and computers to decode. H.265, like what you get out of the FX3 and A7S3, can result in stuttering or some other annoying playback issues compared to an all intra-frame codec like XAVCSI. So the choice is easy, right? Just pick all intra. Sometimes. Let's say that your goal as a videographer is to get hours of material, maybe in event or interviews, continuously recorded to a low number of media cards without dropping from 4K to HD. In a case like this, sometimes the most compressed codec available might be the only realistic choice that you've got. So we're in a pickle, right? Either the material will be annoying to cut due to its compression, or you'll have to buy double the media cards or use an external recorder, right? Well, what if I told you that you could both record in a highly efficient codec like H.265 and be able to edit as if it's shot in XAVCI or ProRes? Proxies are essentially a copy of your recorded material. In most cases, these are lower resolution or a different codec, and what's cool is that if the proxy works better with your NLE than your originals, you can use the proxy to edit with instead of the originals and keep the high image quality of the originals when you render. So you get the best of both worlds, really. Now, some people have an adverse reaction to proxies, and to me it's a little weird, because generating proxies is a pretty standard part of ingest for editing, and it's also often a normal part of the acquisition process in the field for redundancy. So in my view, proxies are totally normal. So how do you make proxies? Well, the first way, as I alluded to earlier, is to record simultaneously when you record your footage. So you will have to get familiar with your camera to determine if you can actually do it. You can follow the instructions provided via the link below for an FX3 or A7S3, which do provide this feature. You can also use an external recorder to record proxies if your camera is able to output a proper signal. Now, if you can't generate proxies during the shoot, don't worry, you can always generate them in post. It can take a little time to process, but you can always just let this run on its own while you're away from your computer. So with all that covered, let's explore using proxies in DaVinci Resolve and see just how useful they can be. All right, we're in Resolve and if I scrub this talking head clip like this, you can see how stuttery it is. Anytime you have material and you scrub the playhead like this and you see how stuttery it is, it's just not going to be fun to edit, okay? It means that you're going to have a hard time arrow keying and all that kind of stuff. Here's one that's shot in 120p here and you can see how bad it is, okay? This file, luckily when I shot, I was able to record proxies at the same time as I was shooting. So it's gonna make it a little bit easier and do some shortcuts for us for post-production. So all I've gotta do is I'm in here in my media pool. I right click the clip. I go over to link proxy media and that is gonna to navigate to a folder here um, in my work drive. I have uh, proxies go into proxy here. I've just called it proxy for, for this one, for this particular file. And you can see here that the naming convention here is very similar to what you get in the source file. So the source here is c0592.mp4, and you can see here c0592, and then it says s03. So I can click on that and hit open, okay? If you have multiple that you're trying to link at the same time, which I'll show you in a second, you don't have to manually select them like this. It'll usually auto select, but since this is just a single clip, it'll show us just one to link to. So I hit open and you can see here that when I scrub, look at that, look how much faster that is. Okay. So this will make it a lot easier to arrow key uh, step through your frames and all that fun stuff when you're cutting. Okay. Here we've got two more clips right here and they are shot in 120p with the same codec as what we had before. So it's going to have some playback issues. So what we're going to do is we're gonna generate the proxies in DaVinci Resolve since we don't have those recorded in camera. So we're gonna go into the project settings. We're gonna go into the master settings. And if you scroll down to optimize media and render cache, you're gonna have some options. So here where it says proxy media resolution, you can pick what you'd like. I usually choose half or quarter depending on what it is that I'm trying to do. For this one, we're just gonna pick half. For the proxy media format, you can pick what you'd like. Any of these DNxHRs are gonna run okay through the editing software. 
So for me, I would say uh, HQX, if you're trying to do some grading for 10-bit files like this, if you're trying to do some grading and you're also trying to do some editing, this one seems to be fine, at least in my experience. I would stay away from H.264 or H.265 if you want the best editing experience. So we're gonna pick DNxHR HQX. And the last thing that you should make sure you look at is where the proxies are going to be saved to. So here it tells us what the folder is gonna be. I'll just highlight this, I'll copy it with Control C. In my folder here, I'm just gonna paste into here. And now we'll have a direct link to where these are gonna go. And uh, uh, this is gonna come into play a little bit later. So I'm gonna hit save. And now if, you, if all of your files are in one folder that you need to create proxies for, you can just hit Control A and then uh, you highlight everything. In this case, I only need to box select two of these. And I'll right click and I'm gonna go down to generate proxy media. So this is gonna take a little bit of time to do. If I pull over the folder, you can see that it now has a folder in here. And the way that it nests these files is a little annoying to me. I would really like Resolve to let you pick uh, specifically which uh, folder it goes to instead of it doing this weird nesting thing that it does. Um, even if you pick a folder, it nests it pretty hard uh, in a way that I, I really, really don't like instead of just saving the files to where you want it to be. Uh, but anyways, uh, we're just gonna navigate into these folders here. You can see how it nests there, which is really kind of annoying. And now we can see that it has some files in here. Okay, so we're just gonna wait for this to finish doing what it does. All right, so we've got both of these files in here. And the next thing that I'm going to wanna do, this is just my personal thing. You can leave these in here if you don't care about uh, where your files end up being. But what I'm gonna do is put them into the project folder because I like to keep my stuff organized. So I'm gonna go into, this is a special folder I made just for this project called uh, Resolve Generated Proxy. I'll go into there and I'm just gonna highlight these, Control X to cut and paste. I'm gonna navigate back out of all this crap, that proxy media, and I'm just gonna delete this nested folder ridiculousness, okay? So now that proxy media folder is nice and, and empty, ready for the next generation of proxies. So close that. And so now we have this folder, okay? I'm gonna take this file path, I'm gonna copy it. Now with these selected here, I'm gonna right click, link proxy media, and then I will paste into my window, hit enter, and you'll see here, since we've multi-selected these two, we don't see any thumbnails for videos. What it's gonna do is if you have multiple selected, it's going to automatically assign each proxy to its source, okay? And I'll show you. So I'll hit select folder, and now they're all linked. So if I double click this one, and we scrub, now look at that. Look how fast it is. This one, same thing. You can see how much faster it is. And that's really all we've got to do here. Now we can easily edit all of our footage uh, without really any hangups, and it will operate pretty much like if you shot it natively in ProRes or DNxHR. And that's really it, folks. Using proxies is simple, easy, and absolutely normal in production, and I hope this video helped ease your concerns about using them and help you gain a functional understanding of how to use them in case you find yourself in a situation where proxies are sorely needed. If you did like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more content like this, please subscribe, ring the bell, and consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Tony Day. Good luck with whatever projects you're working on, and I look forward to speaking with you again next time.